right? Good day, everyone. I'm Gab Kidlat, and I'll be presenting our paper on the effect of embryo surface morphology and grinder type on the particle size distribution of coffee. So I did my thesis with Dr. Emmanuel Garcia from De La Salle University, Manila, under the chemistry department. So we chose this topic specifically because ever since coffee grinds have been yielding a bimodal particle size distribution, or in simpler terms, it yields two distinct particle sizes, or in 80 to 90% of your coffee grinds will be in a specific particle size, while the remaining 10 to 20% will be of a smaller particle size. So no one really bothered to look at why that was or if it had any effect on the flavor of coffee. So in this study that we've done, we tried to narrow down could it be from the um, differences of surface morphology from the embryo versus the rest of the bean or could it be from the grinder that was used, you know, different grinder types, could it be affecting the particle size distribution? So to outline our presentation for today, we'll start off with the introduction. I'll give you some basics on brewing, you know, basic factors that affect the final cup of coffee, the flavor, and then we'll also look at the parts of the coffee bean that we looked at in this study, and then the types of coffee grinders that we looked at as well. And then for the materials and methods, I'll just be discussing what we, we've done. So basically, we use a scanning electron microscopy and particle size analyzer to plot out the particle size distribution. Then we'll move on to the results and discussion. So it mainly will focus on the bean versus the embryo structure and flat versus conical burr particle size distribution. And then lastly, we'll lead into the conclusion. So to start, you know, basics of coffee brewing, these are the basic factors that affect the final flavor of our coffee or the cup of coffee that we make. So it first starts with a bean variety, whether it be, you know, Arabica, Robusta, Liberica, or Excelsa. These different varietals of coffee yield different flavors, for example, the most common would be Arabica and Robusta in the market, wherein Arabica yields a more acidic flavor, but it has less caffeine as a more complex flavor, which is why it's typically used more for higher end brewing, because it requires a higher elevation, you know, higher elevation, the temperature yields a little bit more sugar, so there's a little bit more sweetness there. While Robusta is, you know, your typical cupping barajo or your commodity coffee, basically, which, you know, it grows in, you know, warmer climates, you know, is very picky of the soil. So, you know, it yields a less complex flavor. But, you know, over the years, there have been varietals of Robusta that have good flavor. The next up would be roasting. So from the bean variety, you can still tweak the final flavor by how you roast your beans. So you can have a really, really great Arabica from a single origin, but if you roast it wrong, you could still ruin the flavor. So roasting, this is where and you'll see in the coffee packs where they're, whether it's light roast or medium roast or dark roast. So the you know, key factors are, you know, key chemical reactions involved in the roasting process would be the Maillard reaction, caramelization, and then first and second crack, and then the pyrolysis. So these all contribute to the flavor development during roasting. The next up is what we looked at in our study, the grind size. So grind size is, you know, directly related with your brew method. So you would set your grinder to a specific setting if you were brewing a specific way. So there's a specific grind size for espresso, for pour over, for French press, or for siphon. So we looked at the grind size in this 
study. So also the brew method would, you know, dictate the flavor that you will get, you know, espresso, extract bolder flavors, while, you know, slower extraction methods like a pour over would yield, you know, lighter, more subtle notes, cleaner flavor, and then grind size is, you know, the finer or the coarser is, is you know, gives you that surface area. So you can have really fine grind or fine coffee grounds, but, you know, there's still a limit to that because, you know, you don't want too much surface area wherein you're extracting all of the flavor, including off flavors, where, but when you have a slower, you know, slower extraction method like a pour over, you would need a coarser, you know, grind size to allow that enough interaction or that enough extraction and not, you know, have too much extraction because, you know, it's a slower method. Your coffee is submerged longer in the water, so you're extracting more. So, yeah. Hope that's... And then next is really just the parts of the coffee bean that we looked at. So the coffee bean, basically, it's a, you know, seed of a plant. So it has the embryo where the plant will grow from if you plant it. In this study, we looked at the embryo, which is the central part of the seed, versus the rest of the bean, which is all the other parts doesn't include the embryo. And then two types of coffee grinders. One is conical burr and the other one is a flat burr. So as you can see, there's a structural difference. And we tried to look if there was a significant effect on the particle size distribution depending on the type of burr that was built into the machine or the grinder that they used. So next up for the materials and methods, we took first we took green beans and then we took both we actually both took both green and roasted beans and then we looked for the embryo in these beans. So the bean you can clearly see there's there's a very noticeable bump on the bean where the embryo is. So we cut that up. We cut off that part wherein we see that the embryo is clearly there to isolate a part of the bean where it's just the rest of the bean and then a part wherein it's predominantly the rest of the bean with the embryo. So we cut that up for our experiment. So that's what we then we used a Beckman Coulter LS320 to analyze the particle size distribution of the coffee grinds, the roasted coffee grind. Basically how it works is it fires a laser and then you know light bounces off your different particles and then the computer can calculate from the angle from which the light bounces back, can calculate the particle sizes. Next up is the results in discussion. So this is a quick look at the green unroasted Liberica cross section. So as you can see, the, the embryo, the, the central structure here, th this part right here is clearly very solid. It's a solid mass. It has no holes. It's not very porous. As compared to the surroundings, which is the rest of the bean, I'll pull up a better picture in a bit which is a bit porous. So here's a side-by-side -side comparison of the embryo on the left versus the rest of the bean on the right. So as you can see, the embryo has a very solid, tight structure, wherein it's very solid, it's a solid mass, as compared to the rest of the bean, which is a more of a honeycomb-like structure, of a porous structure. So looking at this, you know, this could be the reason why, you know, they grind up differently because they have different microstructures. However, when we took the particle size distribution of these beans, you know, one containing the embryo, this one, so this is the particle size distribution of, you know, the beans with the embryo, and this one is without the embryo, and then overlaid that. So 
So we did, you know, quite a few trials. We did with the embryo, whole beans, and without the embryo. So it's just the embryo, whole beans, and then without the embryo. As you can see, there's not a lot of difference. There's a slight difference in, in the fines. So this is actually the bimodal nature of the coffee grind. You get a big peak, which is your major peak, and then a smaller fines peak, where less of your grinds are in a finer particle size. So as you can see here that there's not a lot of difference between the one with the embryo and one without the embryo. So this one, this maroon one is the whole, whole beans, and then this one is the just the embryo and without the embryo. So as you can see, those two have a closer structure, but there's not a stark difference. You know, there's not a lot of difference between whole beans and isolated embryos. So this one we can you know rule out that the embryo surface morphology although it's very different from the rest of the bean it did not have a significant effect on the particle size distribution the flat burr or the conical burr clearly has a wider array of particle size distributions you know the, the finer's peak is more pronounced you know, it has a wider particle size compared to the flat burr, which has a more consistent grind size. So from this one, we can clearly see that it's the grinder type that really has a big effect on the bimodality of coffee grinds. So in conclusion, we clearly saw that there was a distinct difference in the embryo structure versus the rest of the bean. However, this structural difference was not enough to elicit the bimodal nature of coffee grinds. And then next is that, you know, particle size distribution clearly comes or is clearly affected by the grinder type. You know, it's we clearly saw it in the conical versus the flat burr. The conical burr clearly yielded a more pronounced fines peak as compared to the flat burr grinder. And then lastly, we would suggest that future researchers do a sensory analysis to further establish, you know, how this would translate to an actual brewed cup of coffee. So, all right, that's it. Thank you. And if you have any questions, my email is on the paper. Feel free to let us know if you have any questions or suggestions or would like to collaborate. Thank you and keep safe.